Connect.com. Big round of applause for our morning sponsors. Thank you. Give it up. Okay. So, um, in addition to you know these great fireside chats, we like to do a little interactive stuff. And um, right now, one of the biggest issues we're going to face, we like to look you know to the future. Um, and one of the biggest issues we're going to face as a civilization, as a race, as a planet, is the food supply. People in the East want to eat steaks like us. There's not all that much protein to go around. Protein is incredibly damaging to the environment to create. I'm not suggesting anybody become a vegan necessarily. Um, but I want to talk about that issue with a couple of entrepreneurs here. And so first, um, let me start with you, Megan. Welcome. Thank you. It's nice to see you again. Now, you understand this issue um, about protein. Why should we, as a society, as a race, as humanity, be concerned about the issue of protein? Well, protein is the most expensive and resource intensive of the nutrients that are necessary in our diet. And as we start to have a growing population, it's supposed to reach 9 billion in the next 40 years or something like that, we're going to have a stress on the economic system that supplies our food. So there are a bunch of different innovators looking at different ways to uh, supplement our existing food supply and come up with other solutions so we're not leaning so heavily on meat. Right, and you have an idea in this regard, and that idea is? Crickets. There you go. <laughs> so these are crickets, and we're just, everybody's getting a complimentary bag of crickets to eat. Um, <laughs> not really. <laughs> but you picked crickets, you picked insects. Yes. Why? There is a huge existing biomass of insects already on the planet that are not being harnessed by Western culture for their astounding nutritional benefits. And um, they're already eaten by 80% of the world's population. There's a very long precedent of them being a part of the human diet. And when you take these guys and you mill them into a fine powder like so, you get a really lovely nutritional uh, ingredient that you can yes. add to all sorts of different foods. And that's what we're doing at Bitty Foods, and we have this nice baking flour that I'm going to turn into a crepe. In so a this food. baking flour is made with ground up crickets. Yes. And then what else? What's the technology? It's got uh, tapioca and coconut and no grains at all. It's completely okay. paleo friendly. Awesome. And um, yeah, right now it is um, the technology at this very moment is not in the creation of the flour. It's in the fact that we have this ingredient that we can blow out to a wide range of food products. Okay, now um, the crickets. <laughs> How long does it take you to catch all these crickets? <laughs> Actually, we have farmers that are growing Oh, it's a farm? Yes. So you're not out hunting crickets? Well, you know, that would be an interesting thing to do, but right. we are you not. You have a cricket farm. <laughs> Where is the cricket farm? Um, there's a cricket farm in Ohio. There's one in Texas. There's some in the southern states near uh, Louisiana. Now, did these exist before you started making your flour? And if they did, what, for what reason? Yes, there's already an existing infrastructure of cricket farms because uh, people have been growing crickets for, you know, maybe you have a pet gecko and you fed them to your gecko, or, you know, some people use them for fishing bait. But um, this existing infrastructure gave us a base that we could then improve and bring up to USDA standards and make them really high quality people food. I'm going to start cooking one. You start cooking? Yeah. Okay, now, next. Um, now, Ethan from uh, Beyond Meat uh, got sick. That's right. Or Tim. That's right, I'm Tim. Okay, so welcome, Tim. Thank you. Uh, Great to be you're here. You're the VP of R and D. That's right. Okay. Now, you're with Beyond Meat. That's right. What is Beyond Meat, and why should we uh, care what you guys are doing? Right. So, I mean, you introduced it beautifully in terms of the impact on the world and everything that's going on right now with with protein and the sources of protein, and traditionally that's been through animal meat. And we inherently believe that uh, animal meat can be recreated. Uh, recreated as using plant proteins. Got it. So yes. you're not built building a soy burger. That's right. You're trying to build an actual hamburger. Actual hamburger, actual meat, muscle tissue. So we'd be, be, we're matching meat for all of its characteristics, and we're, we're, we've really broken down the essential qualities of meat and what people really like about it, the mouthfeel, and what, okay. you, what you look, why, why, you know, why do you eat meat? Right? It tastes good. It tastes good. It yeah. feels good. It's nourishing, it, it. It, right? it's lasting. We're, so we're the you're trying to engineer scientifically meat, not just make us a, a mushroom burger or whatever. 
That's right. That's okay. Right. How far along are you in that journey as a company? In other words, would any of us be tricked eating your chicken or meat if you put it side by side? Yeah, so a lot of people have been tricked. Um, so the, on the Today Show, for example, the, 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 all the news personalities on the, on the morning show have been tricked. Uh, In fairness, like Hoda and Kathy Lee drink a lot of alcohol during the <laughs> show. Like, I'm not sure. That's so right. did Mark Bittman get tricked in the New York Times? That's right, that's right. I mean, the so. New York Times cooking person did a blind taste of your chicken. That's right. And, and the, the, the chicken's chicken. right there. Okay. So yeah. cook, oh, that's the you're cooking yeah. that chicken up yeah. over there. We're okay, collaborating. So we're cook for us. So we're going to cook a. Um, so we have these beast burgers. This is a beastly slider and the regular burger right now. You can okay. find these in, in, a, in a lot of stores. It's uh, going out to about six thousand stores now. And basically, what, we're, what this represents is uh, what we believe is the future of meat, and not in the sense that it's we're not just avoiding all the bad things health-wise that come with meat. We're actually adding in good things. So it has all the omegas of salmon. Has more iron, more protein than beef. It has more antioxidants than blueberries, more calcium than milk. And so it, it's, and it's, it's all done food in a way. It's a superfood and it's all been done uh, through na using natural extracts and, uh, and, our, and our nutrient blend that we created. What do you think is your NRD of like 3D printing a steak? Is that going to happen in our lifetime? Um, when we have the amino acids or whatever the things are we need to have in our house and it goes, oh, would you like a strip steak or would you like a New York or do you want a, you know, Right. Whatever. Cool that. And it goes. So the scalability of that is an issue for sure. Um, but I think that it's not too far off. You're, you're, we're going to be at the point where amino acids. I mean, you have amino acids in your house already. Plants have amino acids. Right. They have lipids. They have carbohydrates. They have all the things that you need that are essentially in meat. So that all those qualities are not exclusive to meat. Okay. So I'm starving. Can you make me something? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So we'll cook up some. The better you do, the less crickets I have to eat. I have to be on meat tacos. Oh, you have to be on meat tacos. Okay. Now. Introduce yourself. I'm James Roberto Evans. I am with Pentelligent. We build to the Intelligent Frying Pan. Okay, so this is an Intelligent Frying Pan. That is correct. Okay, and you haven't turned this on yet, right? It's not hot. It is a hot. Ah! Fuck! I turned this on. It's not hot. It's not hot. Oh, I, oh, I can see how hot it is. So that would not have happened correct. if I was looking at the phone. Pull up the phone. Oh, it's pulled up. Okay, so Pentelligent yes. has created a frying pan correct. that tells my smartphone how many. It is. Basically, yes. We have mounted temperatures inside a frying pan, sensors inside a frying pan. Okay. Uh, that tell you how hot the pan is. And Got using it. that information, we have we have recipes that guide you through cooking to cook okay. everything perfectly so every you time. Picked, uh, so uh, I picked a the, cricket frittata. Uh, it is a zucchini pancake <laughs> made oh. out of bitty flour. Oh, you're going to make it out of bitty flour? Yes, it is all. So this I made a recipe great. over the weekend, and I just started it. Right okay. Before. All right. So it's let's actually here. My, I don't have all day here. I'm my starving. My intelligent just told me that my pan was hot enough to put the zucchini pancake flour in, and I had pre-made it. Uh, so so now, did you do a Kickstarter or an Indiegogo? We did, did. We did a Kickstarter. Uh, oh, eventually, a Kickstarter with a capital K. Correct. Okay. And uh, how many of these did you sell? For what price? Uh, we sold them at 199. Was the Kickstarter price? 199. So we had 440 some odd backers, uh, so okay. we were funded. Uh, so we are working on manufacturing these right now. Okay. Um, they should be available to buy on our website sometime later this year, assuming everything goes well. And so, knowing the temperature of the pan mm -hmm. has never been done before. It has not, surprisingly. How? Because it is really important to cooking. How has that not been done? Because it would seem to me, this is, and I'm not meaning to take down what you've built here, but isn't this it, something it's, obvious? It's obvious after you cook with it for long enough, absolutely. Um, and so, even with this gas burner, you're able to keep the range Correct. At the within exact, five or ten degrees of where I'm supposed to, and that is so brilliant. Perfectly enough to have deliciously cooked zucchini pancakes. We actually had a, a normal zucchini pancake recipe out of all-purpose flour that I tried with bitty pancake flour, and it didn't quite work out. Okay. So what was the problem? The recipe, uh, it was a little too burnt, so wow. this this flour burns a little easier, so you have to be a little more careful with it. Got if it. you don't burn it, it's <laughs> Did you hear that, Megan? If you don't burn it, it don't tastes good. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So now, Megan, what are you making over here? Let's get our camera operator over here. Let's see what's going on here. I am making bitty flour crepes with Beyond Meat chicken Got it. and a delightful vegan cheese. So okay. this is um, close to what we're going to be eating in the future. Full um, meal. And you make cookies currently, right? That's right. We got some of those cookies right there. In the these bag. are the oh, what those is are the cookies. Here we go. This cookies. Yeah. Now these cookies. Are absolutely delicious. Mark, I should come up and have a cookie. Come on up, Mark. Come on up and eat some crickets with me, Mark. Get up here. I need a little help here. Yeah. Taste 
taste test here. Alright, come around. They smell like ginger snaps to me. What a chocolate cardamom. Yeah, that was a nice spicy chocolate. Crank it up. That tastes just like normal cookies. I would never know there's crickets in there. Yeah, that's what we're going for. The crickets are actually very neutral and nutty flavors. So Ladies and gentlemen, them. our grand jury member, Mark Pesci, big round of applause. Nice to see you. Thank you for buds. <laughs> Let's see, do I want to know what you think of this here? Just tell me if it's any good. It's really good. Yeah. 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 Yes, so I also over the weekend also made uh, tacos out of uh, Beyond Meat. Okay. Uh, that is now a recipe on Pentelligent, but I don't have time to cook them both. Mark, I don't know if they are spicy. They're, they're totally spicy. Good. Mark, are you allowed to make spicy? That is how I layer my tacos. Do you, are you, uh, you, you eat fake meat, right? Okay, here's fake meat. Tell me what you think of that. Let's see if I can tell. Now, we should have done an A-B test here. I would have liked to be fooled. Let's see. Um, 85% of the way there. 85% of the way there. All right, that's not good enough yet. We're, we're working on it. It's very close. The nice thing is it can always be improved. Yeah. Unlike normal chicken or uh, the in a version. In a bolognese one part. Yeah. yeah. I think I am almost full. I would be full by this. If I didn't know, I would be full. These are also not super warm, so when they just came out of the pan, they are really Got it. We're about to serve up a crepe here. Okay, this is a crepe made of... Uh, this is made with bitty flour, and then it's going to have... a handheld mic? You got a handheld mic back there? Yeah. A handheld. It's going to have some... Um... No, is this cricket butter, or is this just tarantula butter? What is this? <laughs> this is actually made with cashews. It's a really good oh, cheese. Oh, cashew butter, yeah. Yeah, and we could have just used normal cheese, no, but okay. keeping with the sustainability theme, I thought we would go with something a little different. Now, what is this? So, this is the Beyond Meat Chicken. This is the Beyond Meat Chicken. Got it. Yeah. Um, uh, roll this up in a grape with some arugula. It's going to be delicious. Alright, hold on a second. This is, this is what I'm going to eat here? Yeah, a little arugula. A little arugula on it. Make it gonna break this fancy. Oh, that's pretty nice. Yeah, let's roll it up for you. Roll it up. Okay, here we go. Roll it up here. Roll it up. Cut it in half. Yeah, go for it. Get, get in there. Over there. Let's see. Look at that knife. Yeah. Get over here. Alright, here we go, Mark. So now we're going to eat a cricket pan. Here. It looks dangerous. You first. <laughs> Thanks, Jason. You go first. Give me a napkin. Give me a napkin. Oh, yeah. uh, there's some here. Okay, so what? You taste the cricket? Cricket goodness in there? Let me take a look. It's delicious. Good. I'm glad you enjoy it. Okay. I have to say right now, I, this is delicious. And the chicken, I can't, I think you nailed it on the chicken, by the way, beyond me. Fantastic. Is that big chicken? That's big chicken. You didn't know. No, I had no idea. The chicken. Did you taste this chicken yet? Yeah, it's great. Okay. Did you taste this? I have tasted it. Taste a piece of this chicken. You guys want to raise your hand? Take a piece. Mm -hmm. That's a mushroom. That's a mushroom. You can't tell. I found out. You can't tell. But you, you know what? It's it's almost like there's a little something wrong with the mouthfeel. I think. I think you need to put one of these. Oh, there you go. Make it crunchy. <laughs> It definitely needs more cricket. There you go. <laughs> but why don't people eat more cricket? Why don't people eat more cricket? I mean, I think for some people there's a visual barrier. You know, they're just not used to thinking about this. But to me, like once, you know, I've gotten used to it and this doesn't really You eat look, these? Yeah. It doesn't look too much different to me than like... Sure. It doesn't taste like much. See? Yeah. They kind of... Uh, Here, Mark. Eat a cricket. It's like a potato chip. Right. It's like there's a nothing chip. on here at all. Yeah, there's nothing on there. Yeah. So what it, what would the what's the impact on water and carbon in the atmosphere? I'll open that up to the whole panel. Yeah. Water and carbon in the atmosphere. What would be the savings if ten percent of people or twenty percent or ten percent of our meals, twenty percent of our meals came from this type of protein mix? Right. Beyond meat, cricket flour, not steak, chicken, etc. It would be huge. The United Nations did this big report in 2013, and they figured out that uh, if if edible insects became a part yep. of the global diet, we would cut 18% of the world's carbon emissions. 18%. 18%, and that's from edible insects uh, just making its way into the mainstream food supply.
supply. And of course, if people cut out less of their meat on a daily basis and add in other plant proteins, it would be even higher. What's going on back there? There have been numbers <laughs> anywhere from eight to two. Mark and I are having a moment here. <laughs> I want to taste Okay, that's amazing. Yeah. That is amazing. So what's really good about this for the paleo, how many people in the audience are like paleo? Not cases. No? Come on. There's a couple out there. That paleo stuff, how many grams of protein am I going to get using the flour? Um, is it high in protein or medium? Yeah, no, it's very high in protein. It's got 28 grams of protein per cup, which is you know, wow. three times what you get from wheat flour. Fascinating. Yeah. Okay, now where are we at with the sliders? Yeah, yeah. There? Um, yeah. are you ready? Yeah, those are right. There we go. Um, so where will this be? The chicken, you're there. Okay. And the chicken's in the market, right? Chicken's in the market. Have any, has anybody tried Beyond Meat Chicken, by the way? Oh yeah, there's some people who've actually tried it. It's in about almost 7,000 stores. Right? 7, but that was, that was our first uh, product, and yeah. it's constantly in, being improved um, as we go along. And I'll let you go ahead and grab, grab one and set one. Um, and uh, so it was kind of our flagship uh, product, and we, it's, as we as have a slide, it's version uh, 1.5, we're coming out with version 2.0. So every time it's getting better. That's all based on customer feedback. Oh. So, so and that's the nice thing about being in the marketplace is that uh, you can get that immediate feedback. You're doing a great job. Yeah. This. Well, I have to try. Uh, you're better than I am. You have to try. Um, um, so where will we be in another five years with these products? Do you think? Because right now it seems like you're on the cusp. Yeah. Well, within the next year, we are planning on being in a situation where we're taking you know, basically raw meat, so raw chicken, raw beef. <coughs> Well, we're we're it. Yeah, it's kind of trippy, right? Um, but the idea is that it's identical in how it looks and how it behaves, and so it can really be a drop-in replacement for existing recipes. How, how is that? It's pretty good. It's, it's, say, it's sort of halfway between a veggie burger and a real burger. Right, it feels like, that's exactly how I was going to describe it. That's what? It feels like halfway between a real burger and a veggie burger. Yeah. I don't like veggie burgers, Yeah. but I find this is almost like a lighter yeah. burger. Yeah. Does that make sense? Not as greasy? Yeah. yeah. That's right. There is less fat in there for sure. Um, it's a lot less fat than what you would have in a, in a real burger. And, um, uh, and the, the degree of chew that you're, you're talking about, so that's going to be different between a, a homemade burger versus a McDonald's burger, right? Um, and so we're trying to somewhere in the middle, basically. And so you can, uh, you can, and we, can we can make it chewier depending on feedback from you. If you want to chew right. it or make it chewier. Um, it's a nice thing. And so the, the beautiful thing about this is that we've just taken plant proteins and we've put them under a little bit of steam, a little bit of uh, pressure. And it's a very gentle process. And so we've just retrained the proteins how to fold. And so what that does is that if you think about it, what we're doing is we're creating a solid state emulsion, much like your salad dressing. Oh, okay. And so where you're getting oil and water to kind of coexist peacefully right. in salad dressing, we're doing the same thing here. And so normally when you try and get this much protein in a, in a solid, something to eat, it's powdery, it's dry, it's water. Yeah. Um, or it's mushy, and it, you know, it, it just it fades as a, as a... What about cost? So if a McDonald's can produce yeah. a burger for X, right. you can currently produce the same burger for X times two or three? So this burger, because we've, we've hopped it up on so much great extracts that create yeah. a nutrient blend, this is primarily designed for athletes. We have a lot of athletes ah. picking this up, professional athletes. They're a buck each, and so they're... Yeah, so for a box of sliders, it's a six. Um, it's, I think it's five, five and a half. And it's a dollar each. Burgers. Uh, yeah, for the, for the sliders. The sliders, yeah. Um, and so, so it is more. But we, we probably can, we three can, times more than what McDonald's charges. But it won't kill you. It won't kill you. And the and the real cost to McDonald's beef is actually not really calculated properly. So the real cost. There's, right. there's, well, there's a, there's a great article on Meatonomics. If you're, if anybody's read. I, I don't have it. I let my subscription run out. Okay. Yes. So Meatonomics is a is a, is a book. Yeah. And um, so they, they can go through all the numbers that the, the true cost of a McDonald's hamburger, and it's closer to between eight and eleven dollars. What? You factor in all the, the environmental costs, all the costs to the. And what are we subsidizing them? Where well, they're including, they're including the heart attacks. Heart attacks, and yeah. So there's all the you know, un, you know kind of hidden truths about um, meat consumption that even gets. So I'm I'm a carnivore uh, historically, but I've always been interested in what's next and what's healthier. And I'm getting older now, and I need to be healthy. I want to keep up with my kids. Yeah. And um, so whether it's uh, dementia, all the way to obesity um, and cardiovascular disease, meat consumption is one of the leading causes of now there uh, our cost, our healthcare pro profile. And, Death. There's a really easy way to test this, I think. Oh, oh all right. Yeah, here, let me get that microphone for a second. <laughs> this, you know, because you can always tell I've heard dogs, that. I think. Let me get my taste testers out here. <laughs> Look at bring me those dogs. Look at those dogs. They want to try this? Come here, puppies. Who's hungry? Come on, guys. She doesn't have to come out. Come here, dogs. 
Beyond Meat, 